Welcome into Sports Tonight. Sports Director Bailey Burmaster here with you. We have a good loaded show for you. We're going to talk a little bit about the Hawks and getting ready for that play-in tournament. We're also going to talk about G-Day in Athens, Kirby Smart, and a couple players will join us to talk as well. So we got a lot going on, but... Um, we do want to mention it's the WNBA draft tonight. The Atlanta Dream have the 12th pick, so we will get to see what they do. It is a star-studded star cast with the fact that they have Caitlin Clark, who is expected to go first overall to the Indiana Fever. Uh, Angel Reese, everyone will be seeing where she wants to end up. Uh, it's going to be something worth turning into. We'll also hear from Tanisha Wright tonight for the Dream uh, later tonight on 11. So if you want to join us on CBS and Atlanta News First, we will have that for you as well. The Hawks gearing up for the play-in tournament as well. They will go to Chicago on Wednesday to face the Bulls. Uh, and they've just been dealing with injuries after injuries as of late. Sadiq Bey been out with an ACL injury. Uh, they just got Trey Young back, but Jalen Johnson leaves because he sprained his ankle again. Um, Onyeka Okongwu is expected to be out three and four weeks as well as Johnson. So we'll have to win two games. And if they do, then for the third straight year, they will make it to the play. They will be in the play-in tournament and then like last year they'll go to the first round to face the Celtics again so something they're a little bit familiar with we'll have to do you know battling injury but our Emily Gagnon and Lee Smith were actually in Brookhaven as the team practiced and let's head to them out there for the latest. Hey Bailey, Emily Gagnon here along with Lee Smith from the Hawks facility in Brookhaven. They're practicing ahead of their play-in tournament game on Wednesday at the Bulls, a 9.30 tip, Lee, so it's going to be a late one for all of you Hawks fans. Um, but the thing that I'm looking at overall, Lee, is that they are in the same spot that they've been in the last three seasons. For three straight seasons, they've had to play themselves into a playoff spot. Yeah, what, Cavs, Hornets, who else was it? Uh, last year, it, was it the Hornets last year? I know one of the years it's been the Hornets, yeah, for sure. And then the Cavs, a couple years ago, I think it was the Cavs. Now now Lee's putting me to the test and, but, but, and making but, me think about who exactly they played. Well, well, but that's not good for the Hawks, right? Because then you have to remember who all they play. <laughs> they got to win two games just to get into the playoffs versus already being in the playoffs and then, you know, just playing it out how it – how it should go but you know they lost last last season to the Celtics in the first round you know they had a Celtics were pretty good though so. I'm glad you bring that up because Lee it's going to be deja vu for this team <laughs> if they're able to win back-to-back -back games so not only do they have to beat the Bulls but they'll have to also beat the loser of the 7-8 game right right and that just makes it so much tougher but if they get through that they have the Celtics oh oh great that's your reward oh cool the same thing. Yes. Awesome. So deja vu. So so for me, I guess my big point is that for the last three seasons, there just hasn't been much movement. We are standing exactly where we were three years ago. Different coaches. Uh, pretty much the same team, though. I mean, the same nucleus as far as, like, yeah. star players. So at, at this point, you know, yeah. what what happens from here? I mean, wh where do you take this team? I, I don't know what you do with them. I mean, every, they've tried. It seems like they've tried everything. I mean, they, they came, they gave you DeJounte because they said Trey needed more help. Um, they have, I mean, they drafted a Kongwu to have some kind of, you know, defensive presence uh, for a big man. It just doesn't seem like anything's really worked. It, 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 it really seems like they've found ways to lose that are just every night that is something different. I mean, how do you two weeks ago beat the Celtics? Twice in Twice. one week. And you have the most historic comeback you've ever had as a franchise. And then you follow that up by beating them again at home. And fast forward to last night when they lose by 40. Last night was not pretty. 157 so to 115 really at know. the Pacers. It's just, it's just an inconsistency. I, I, I don't know where they go to get any consistency because it's different head coaches too. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I'm just baffled. Fans might be too. I mean, I, I think that though, uh, you know, the front office fans should be fed up and there should be a drastic change this offseason and, and that drastic change very well could be saying goodbye to your franchise player in Trey Young. Yeah, uh, it, it looks like it's come to that it, either him or DeJounte. I just don't see how they keep both of them um, and, and, and it's bad because 
it's really bad because DeJounte, he's shown, like, he can be that guy. When he actually gets the ball and he has time to make decisions with it and he's a ball-dominant point guard and he actually gets to be in that role, I mean, other than, like, a couple of games here and there, I mean, they it looks like they've always had, they've had a shot when he's had that role. Um, and let me so, tell you, that role is usually when Trey is out. Right. And he's also – he's better defensively. Um, so, I, I don't know. I, it would be tough if you, if you got to make that call. I'm just glad I'm not the GM. Yeah, it would be interesting to see what they do. Um, and, and, you know, after they made that Eastern Conference run, Lee, they, they wanted to keep most of those players together, and that's what they've done. Uh, but besides that one run, they just haven't been able to, you know, do it again. Um, for me, I think, you know, it, there'll be a big decision on Trey Young this offseason. Uh, so it'll be him or DJ. And then they need uh, a bigger presence from a big guy. I, I love Quint Capella, don't yeah. get me wrong. But but that, to me, is what they're lacking the most. Well, when you see the best three, four teams in the NBA, what, what's the common denominator? They're always going to have good guards, but they have big men who step up. Joel Embiid. Big men. Joel Embiid, Giannis. I mean, those are just the – to me, those are the top two. And guess what? Every year the Sixers and the Celtics are in it. Um, now, I, oh, Joe Jokic, uh, out in Denver. Duh. I mean, yeah. he's won the MVP, what, twice in a row? And guess what? They've won one championship. So, I think more than anything, a big man that can defend and score – is a he, he, they just they're worth their weight in gold because you can't find them at the at, at the elite level anyway. And I just do wonder. I mean, is this going to lead to a rebuilding of the Hawks? And you know, uh, Coach Bud was trying to avoid all those years ago when he left because uh, he wasn't fired. He left on his own, uh, you know, cognition because he didn't want to rebuild. And then he went to uh, where he went, and then he <laughs> won a championship. Which is kind of it's kind of crazy when you think about it. You know. Because, I mean, the Hawks weren't terrible back that He had, what, the 60-win season, right? Yeah, back then. <laughs> I mean, so you leave a team that had won 60 games, and then you go for uh, the Celtics, who they had a big man. Guess what? Proves to be the best or top two big men of the entire game. They had a couple of players around them, and they end up beating this team in 21. Yeah. Th the uh, the Hawks to get to their championship and then they beat the Suns after that but it's just it's it's just kind of weird to see the Hawks be in this limbo where they're good enough to beat any team on a given night and then they're also bad enough to lose by thirty or forty it's just weird to see and especially being in the playoff for what three years straight the play in tournament play in tournament I don't know if that's happened to any other franchise. I'm right. not sure, but 36 and 46 in a season is not Just, acceptable. No, no. Not not especially when they, you know, they, they went out and they got DeJounte and they uh, – And a traded, new head coach. They traded Herter a couple years ago. And then what? And from from that 21 season, was it Gallinari, Herter? Uh, Red Velvet, baby. Yeah, and Red Velvet was – he's doing pretty well in Sacramento. He's injured. You know, he yeah, injured that, himself yeah. this season, but he, but he still, right? that was a great move for him. He did yeah. not want to leave Atlanta. He was upset about it, but uh, professionally, he, he it, it was the right move. So it's just kind of weird to see some of that stuff where people, they, they leave here and they, they flourish somewhere else. And then you think, well, what if we had, had kept them? Like, what if, what if we had just maybe gotten someone else in free agency instead of, uh, you know, player A or B and then you know, it goes from there. But I, I honestly, I'm just kind of baffled. I don't really know what to say at this point. More questions <laughs> than answers. Yeah. Hopefully we will, you know, see the Hawks go on some kind of a run starting Wednesday uh, from Chicago. But, again, they have to win two games to make it to the first round of the playoffs. And in the first round of the playoffs, they would then meet the Celtics, the number one team in the NBA. Uh, and, and that's exactly what happened last year. And so it just seems like a lot of deja vu, a lot of seasons of the same result. And uh, you know they have to be sick of it. Good thing is, though, they just beat the Bulls last week. So, it's doable. So, who would they play after that? I'm not sure who the 7 and 8 team seven is. Eight, but they would still ha but they have to win twice to advance to play Boston. So, the cards are stacked against them, but, you know, they did it themselves. So, we'll see. Bailey, we're going to send it back to you. I'm sure you have more questions than answers about this team, too. <laughs>
Um, but it's worth mentioning, you know, obviously Lee and Emily out there doing the Lord's work and always having a good time. But we want to talk about G-Day in Athens. Georgia had their spring game. Georgia Tech had their spring game as well. Uh, lots of elements that we want to get to there. Uh, but let's start with the fact that this spring game ended in a tie, 20 to 20. Uh, how exciting can that be? Who knows? But the reality is 2020 Carson Beck did lead the Red Squad 70 yards for a game tying touchdown with 27 seconds left. Very interesting. But he said, you know, at the end of the day, it's a spring game. Um, Kirby did talk following the G day. So let's hear what he had to say. Yeah, Carson had a great spring to me. He's had a quiet leadership. He's got a lot of confidence. When things aren't going well, kids and players and O-line turned to him. He had really good moxie out on the field. He never, you know, pressed or, or got frustrated even today. He went and drove the team down and made some really elite throws there at the end uh, to give us a chance to, to tie the ball game. But in, taking today out of it, I mean, I don't, I don't even go off today. He's had a good spring. He's just – he knows how to navigate a pocket. He knows where to go with the ball. There's nothing he hasn't seen on defense. So uh, I'm happy with where he is. I want him to continue to grow as a leader. Did your heart skip a beat at all when you fell down from pick, not bent over? Yeah, it did. It worried me there. He rolled up a little bit. But he's a durable kid. He's an athlete, good baseball player, and uh, got rolled up on some there, and it was a little scary. Kirby, what did the DB show you this spring that looked all week there? Um, that we got a long way to go. You know, we lost three really good football players there, and um, we're thin. Uh, you know, David Daniel wasn't able to go today, uh, and I'm trying to think who else we had out. DB Malachi was out. Justin Rett was out. Demello was dealing with a little bit of a hamstring coming off of that. So, you know, w we got better in the secondary, but we're not where we need to be in terms of being able to make plays on the ball downfield and uh, affect the quarterback. To build off of that, to Corey Thomas entering year three, what skill set does he bring, and what do you expect from him the rest of the spring and summer? He's a tough guy, man. He's smart. Um, plays really hard. You know, he, he, was, he, he showed up last year on special teams, and I always say if they can do the things we ask them to do on special teams, then they'll be good defensive players. He, he got put in a pickle because he was really competing at star, and he has a chance to, to play for us and start at star. Well, we had to work him at safety with the, uh, the injuries. So he played 50-50 safety star, but he had to play more safety today. Keeping out of the interception, throwing off of the pass, uh, no small moment in the spring. What did you make of that? Growth. I, I, I really thought that Raylan and CJ would be further along because of how much they played, and I don't think you give them enough credit for <laughs> they really shouldn't have been out there last year and they had to go play. And um, they didn't play bad, but they didn't play great. Well, I expected the spring to be like this huge jump. They're still freshmen, uh, and CJ and Raylan got better. They're going to be really good leaders for us. Uh, I think the fact Smile was out was good for them. Um, and then it was, you know, Jalen missed a lot of time this spring with a with an ankle injury, and today was his first day back. And you know, it doesn't say enough about our team. The kids are trying to get out of spring games all around the country, and this guy was mad that we were thinking about not playing him. I mean, he wanted to play, he wanted to go out there and compete and get better. And um, really appreciate Jalen's leadership and the way he handles things. Kirby, what do you think about this wide receiver group? Is it, is it deeper than we've had in many years? I don't know. I don't. I know the, the 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 first level. Let's call it the first four guys, five guys deep. It's very experienced, like very experienced. And then after that, it's like I'm still trying to figure out what we got. You know, there's the young players that are talented. Sokovia and Nitro are going to be good players. Um, the, the 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 portal guys are are still coming along. Mike Jackson in London, and then Colby was factored in and made some plays. Colby's made plays like he made like that all spring. And then when you throw the Ra-Ra, Dylan, Arian, and uh, Dom out there, it gives you a – what they are is the, like, the bullies. They, they, they bully on special teams. They, they, they lead. They show toughness. And that's usually your defensive back group. And for us right now, it's our, our wideouts. Coach, uh, Lawson Lucky was on the field pretty much every play for the red team today. What has he kind of shown to – show himself as a every down contributor at the tight end position? He's had a great spring. We gave him a lot of reps, a lot of chance to grow with Pierce being out. He's shown great toughness, great maturity, uh, uh, durability. I mean, that's that's what Oscar Delph has been. Oscar Delph is the one guy when Darnell was out, Oscar took all the reps. When Brock was out, Oscar took all the reps. So Oscar's taken a lot of football reps and gotten better for us. Well, Lawson stepped up and took on a, a larger role of that. You know, and, and the Riddell kid and Heinrich, they both they both came a long way from the start of spring. A long, they got a long way to go, 
but they came a long way. And, and Jaden missed half the spring probably with a hamstring, so it was good to have uh, those two guys get better. He went back in, I think. I thought I saw him go back in. He's uh, he had a shoulder uh, there, and then I heard him say he jumped back in. Ryan shows up with the crutch or the cane or whatever you want to call it. Just what is that? Is that an addition to the knee injury you mentioned a couple weeks ago? Yeah, the knee it, it's it's a stress uh, it's a small stress fracture, so it's not a break or a, a, a significant injury. It's a shutdown injury and let it rest. Um, and so we listened to what the doctor said and, and did that, but it's not a a long term problem. But it did affect us in terms of reps. It probably gave Gunner more growth than ever because he took twos, threes. I mean, Gunner just took a ton of reps. Kirby, I know that this is about the spring game, but this is kind of a new world we're in, as you've noted before. I don't don't think you're going to hold a portal press conference in the next week or two. What What is kind of the overview? Uh, I know you guys recruit to need. I know Gunner mentioned you usually feel comfortable with four quarterbacks. Gunner mentioned you usually feel comfortable what? Four scholarship quarterbacks. Right? Oh, yeah. I always want to have – Yeah, our goal is to have four and a really good walk-on. That's the goal. We think we've got a, a, a preferred walk-on kid that's a really good player that's coming in and uh, excited about him. We thought he was a really good player in our state. Um, but, you know, we'll see what happens. I, I can't predict the portal. I wouldn't even try to. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about our guys and, and the retention of our players. Well, I don't know if I've seen him attack it. I mean, I, I want to see him attack the ball better. We gave up, uh, we gave up a lot of plays in the spring, and in, in what I call 50-50 balls. We didn't give a lot of them out. What you saw, the microcosm of today, was a really good quarterback throwing really good touch passes and the, the throw to Dom. I mean, I've seen that 20 times this spring, and it's like we you're right there. We just couldn't quite get it out. And when you have a good thrower and a catcher with people that protect. It's dangerous. So I, I want to see more out of the secondary. Like, I want to see, you know, I mean, yeah, Malachi's out. That's okay. Uh, there's other guys out there that have scholarships that can make plays, too. What did you see out of Dean Harris this spring? Man, I thought he had a good day today. I mean, I can't say his whole spring was like that, but he was disruptive today. He's twitchy. He's hard to block. I love the way he plays. But he, he, he sometimes plays – out of control, which can be a good thing. And it was good today on some plays. But it also, first play of the game, he screwed up, went the wrong way, didn't have right, didn't line up right. So sometimes you don't know what you're getting with Gabe. But you do get great effort, and you do get great toughness. And I love that. With Troy Bowles, uh, you're saying he was having a really great spring. Um, what did he do today? It feels like he was all over the When field. did I say Troy Bowles was having a really great spring? Yeah. And then what can you say of like his development and, and stuff like that and um, how he's kind of progressed, especially making an athletic interception um, in the first half? Was that Troy's? Uh, Troy Bowles. He was credited with it. He was credited with an interception. Really? I'm not sure if he actually had it. Oh, C.J. Allen made that play. Allen might have one interception. Oh, they gave. They might have gave Troy that. That wasn't in the first half, though. I don't think. And maybe they did. I thought that ball bounced. But no, um, Troy's 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 done a good job. I mean, Troy's Troy's got to get better. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, he, he's got to get better. Um, he's in the same class with those other two guys. They got an extra spring on him. He needs to be, you know, playing catch up. He is a bright kid. He's he's a really good special teamer. Um, he works hard. I expect I have, hold him to a higher standard being a coach's son. And my expectation is when you learn the defense and you understand it, you execute it at a high level, and he's got to do better. Now, he is an athlete, and he can play in space, and that's what playing linebacker is now in football. So uh, I'm not I'm not happy with where he is, but I can't really judge, you know, how he played today. I was thinking of CJ's interception. Kirby, you've got a streak going. I know you don't pay too much attention to these things. I think you've won 20 games in a row, and you've had more than a week to prepare. Obviously, there's an offseason. Can you give us a kind of overall 10,000-foot view of what's, what's next? Lifting. I mean, we're going to go Monday. We, we, we get after it. We're going to work out. We're going to target some guys' weights. We're going to drive some weights down. We're going to lift. we got to get our bottom half of our roster to the top half. And you're not going to get there watching spring game tape. I mean, you you, you, you got to go get to work. And uh, we're going to work really hard on those guys. Uh, we're going to keep meeting and talking to our players. I told them the job's not done. We're not where we need to be. We just don't get to practice anymore. We get to do other things. So uh, we'll get back to work Monday. Carson, you said that he hoped to 
final result meant everybody getting steak and lobster? How do you how do you handle this tradition? Yeah, I told them it's beanie weenies for a tie. It's like <laughs> kissing your sister. And uh, the, the guys that played both sides of the – like we had a couple guys change over teams that I was going to let them eat steak for changing teams and being selfless. They did they didn't approve. Did you make the call not to go for the window? Or well, I didn't want to put a two-point play on tape, which we, we did that last year. Mm -hmm. Either last year or the year before, we did it, and I was like, ah, we're we, we going to keep those things in our pocket. We don't need to show off those and figure the kickers needed to work. You know, he's flashed. Um, I wish he would play with more consistency, meaning like he did today all the time. He had, you know, some good plays and some bad plays. And I look at it, he's really still a freshman. Um, he's worked hard. Uh, he's, he's gone against a really good offensive line. And he's taken on some uh, ferocious double teams. And he's really a good athlete. And uh, uh, if we continue to grow him and get him stronger and get him tougher, he's going to have a chance to help us. Regarding what you said about the, the portal and, and the tent tonight, what is your level of concern about other teams coming to, to your ranks? I'm not, I mean, I don't really, what, 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 can I control it? No, no, I can't. So I don't, I mean, I don't, if I concern myself with things I can't control, I won't live long. I mean, I, I, I mean, there's just too much out there. So it's really one of those things where it's like, do you want to be here or do you not? Because they know how we do things by now. They all know. They said that was the easiest practice we've had all spring. So they enjoyed it thoroughly. And um, if guys want to be somewhere else, I, ha I have no control over that. Time for two more questions. Jake Pope had a couple pass breakups there. He did a good job. He, he carried over well what he knew from um, you know, his last school to here. Um, he's got to continue to get better and understand our defense, um, make plays in space, and, and he needs to help us on special teams and be able to play faster and, and do some things. I did think he made some nice plays. In general, you have a lot of young, explosive athletes on the red team defense. How do you think they did in terms of communicating, being on the same page, and executing their assignments today? I feel better watching the tape than commenting on it. I, I did think they had fun out there, and it was a lot of mid-year defensive players out there just kind of running around. And, you know, you see the athleticism of a Justin Williams and a Chris Jones and a Chris Cole and a Ellis and K KJ. I mean, it's just like so many of them that just got here. And that's going to pay off for us, you know, uh, when they have to play. Um, I could sit here and talk to you for an hour about okay. that. I mean, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, I'll try to give you the, the shortened version. Um, I think the biggest thing – it's just understanding that, you know, it takes it takes time to, um, you know, get to the, the point where we're going to be at the season, if that makes any sense. You know, um, throughout the January, February, March, you know, there's so much that goes into it. There's so much practice, so much time, so much so many hours that we spend together as a team that, you know, that final product that we see, you know, at the very end of the year, it, it takes time and practice. And, you know, that's this is just one of the, you know, stepping stones. And we're going to continue that through the summer and then into the fall. Um, but super excited to see where this team can go. Is it difficult to be patient during that process? Yeah, absolutely. Um, What's the hardest part? Um, I think you just said it, is being patient and, not, and trying not to look forward um, to those moments, to the games. Because that's, that's the, the best part. That's the most fun um, is the games every single Saturday, get going, getting, getting to go out there and um, perform in front of the fans, play with your guys. But coming in each and every day, going to work, and being present in the moment, you know, not looking at things that have happened, not looking too far into the future of the things that you want to happen, but being present, coming in each and every day and work. And I think that's a, that's something that our team has done really well this year. Carson, what do you make of the, the depth at this wide receiver spot? Like, I don't know if Anthony Evans' names gets mentioned a lot, but so many, you know, transfers have come in. Like, like you know, how many weapons do you have and what are you going to um, a lot, and obviously that makes my job a lot easier. Um, super excited to see what those guys are able to do as we, you know, continue through. But I mean, a lot of guys made some really good plays out there on, you know, both sides of the ball. But especially at the wide receiver room, there's so much depth that it really doesn't matter who's out there on the field. We know that, you know, they're going to make the play, and we're confident in them. To Very good up, moment. To follow up on the receivers, what is it like to have so many different body types? You guys, you got Colby Young, you got Anthony Evans, Dylan Bell. Like having so many different guys with different skill sets in that room. What is that like? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a lot of different ways that we can attack a defense, um, but that obviously helps us as an offense uh, immensely. And there's so many different guys that are going to make plays. And the, th the good thing about it is, is all of them are very selfless. Um, so they're going to go out there. They're going to give their 100% each play that they're out there. And they're going to be happy for the next guy if they're not the one that makes a play because they know the next time around the ball might be coming into them and they got to do it. So, but it, it definitely helps me a lot to have, you know, a lot of guys that are very talented. What was the difference in the second half? I mean, you, you charged up and you came back out there. It looked like a different offense almost. 
Yeah, I don't know. We um, Towards the end of the first half, we were a little slow, uh, a little sluggish. I don't know what it was. You know, it happens sometimes. Um, it's it's not about, you know, what you do. It's how you bounce back from things. Um, I thought towards the end, we started to pick it up a little bit, you know, pick up the pace. And all it was was really a mindset thing for us. I think the second quarter, you got locked back in, getting yourself down. Was that at all a scary moment? Or I know Coach... Oh yeah, he didn't. He didn't land it on my leg a little bit. Um, I don't know. I just fell with it. Not, nothing was wrong. I was good. It hurt a little bit in the moment, but did you, get a, did you sense like a coach was kind of worried about like what just happened there? Or? Um, nah, I just, shoot, I don't know. I'm not hearing what he's talking about behind me. So you mentioned the mindset. No, you know, Coach Carson and Coach Kirby have talked to you about assertiveness and leadership, and it really did look like you were in command. Do you think you had a lot to do with that mindset of the second half? Did you get played? Um, uh, maybe. Yeah, a little bit. Um. You know, I don't, I don't talk too much. I'm not like a super um, rah-rah guy. I'm, I'm, I'm more quiet. But when things need to be said, they're, you know, they're said. And it's just simple. There's no need to yell at somebody, no need to do all that. But just, you know, um, have confidence what you're saying. Tell them, like, let's go. Let's pick it up. You know, we didn't have the, the best first half. You know, we um, could have done a lot better, made, made some mistakes. But come back out and try to have some passion and energy and just enjoy, you know, playing in Sanford. Carson, how much weight do you put into the spring game? And how do you gauge your performance? Um, honestly, not a lot. I mean, it's just a glorified scrimmage. That, that's what it is at the end of the day. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's more for fun, you know, come out here in Sanford, um, play in front of the, the fans. Obviously, every single day we're going to go out there and compete. So I say fun, you know, competing is fun. And obviously, um, I don't like losing. We tied, which isn't a loss, but no, I'd rather win. But it's, it's all good, you know, spring, go out there, see what the guys can do, you know, maybe try to do some things that you haven't done to see, you know, okay, maybe I can do this in a game, maybe, you know, throw this a certain way, but go out there, try some things and just try to have fun and compete. I've never doubted how confident you are since the day I started talking to you, but go back to a year ago today during the spring game last year, how have things changed? Um, immensely. I mean, it's way different. I'm, I'm a much different person. I've grown a lot um, from the person that I was last year. And it's a different situation. You know, um, last year I was competing for a spot um, in, this, in the spring game. And now, you know, coming back and being the guy and, you know, understanding um, what I need to do, um, you know, to make this team move and go. Um, but I wouldn't want it any other way. How have you seen Stockton's confidence grow? Yeah, as he continues to get reps, um, I mean, we, we see what he's capable of. You know, he has a great arm, great athleticism. Um, and as the mental side of the game grows, I mean, the sky's the limit for him. Carson, it almost looked like second half playing a lot of linebacker. What was that like today? Yeah. Man, it, it was fun. It, it had a great time. You know, that was our goal during spring to make sure I could be versatile at both inside and outside backer. And I think uh, that goal was successful with us today. Yeah, obviously, having tackled Roger Robinson, you guys had a little bit of trouble today. Um, what's kind of the best way you can go about tackling a guy like that? And how nice is it going to be seeing him? run against other defenses in the fall. Right, Rod is a talented back, you know, he's a big back, you know, but our goal is, you know, just get him on the ground, you know, wrap our, uh, wrap, wrap him up and then drive our feet. You know, he does a great job using his body to his advantage. So, uh, of course, we'll get better through that. But we'll face uh, various backs throughout the season for that, uh, with that effort, so. Obviously, a probably better day for the defense versus the offense today. Yeah. How much is that kind of finishing strong? How much is it reflecting what happened when they saw this spring or what? Um, I feel like that was expected for of us. You know, we had a great spring as the defense side of the ball, you know, and continue striving efforts, you know, to get better. You know, this game was about getting better. And, you know, going out there to compete against our 1-0, uh, oh, you know, it's just a great opportunity for us to get better. And, you know, I feel like we had the upper hand today. I know you probably need real games to start to feel what the defensive identity would be, but do you kind of have a sense or an idea of right. what it be? I think we're still growing our identity. I know that we'll uh, run fast and hit hard. You know, that's a, one of our core traits of toughness. You know, we're connected as well. You know, but going out here, you know, today, you know, having fun, you know, just flying around. Our identity will be uh, made up throughout summer and then going towards our first game against Clemson. Carson Beck said the offensive line is the best in the country, but I would say the defensive line dominated today. Um, what were you guys looking to do this spring, maybe you personally and the defense as a whole? You know, me personally is just get better. You know, uh, find that versatile role, you know, show my value at inside backer and outside backer. And I feel like, uh, you know, I had a great spring, you know, just doing that and then striving to get better throughout my. Uh... That will do it for this edition of Sports Tonight. We're going to wrap up. You guys have a great night.